Welcome as we continue to work through PseudoWrite and I show you exactly how you can use Story Engine in your writing. And today we're getting to the good parts, the juicy bits of Story Engine, because now we are going to talk about crafting your beats and creating the finished prose from those beats. And so let's get into it. All right, today I've gone ahead and prepared the first chapter. Now, I may have gone a little bit overboard with how many words I'm using here for this first chapter. That It certainly doesn't need to be this long because we are going to be putting a lot more detail into the actual beats. But I wanted to demonstrate that if you have more information in this, you'll get slightly better beats over here. You have this one, which is a lot more vague. This was generated by the AI for chapter two here. And so I'll go ahead and show you the difference between these two because it does make a little bit of a difference even though sometimes you don't necessarily need it to be that detailed. So we have chapter one here, chapter two here. First let's generate the beats for chapter one and I'll just go ahead and let Pseudorite do this. All right, it's generated 400 words here <clears throat> for 12 different story beats. Let's go ahead and generate the beats for chapter two. All right, so for chapter one here, we have begin by describing the settings of the wedding, including the location, time of day, and any noticeable features. Then it adds these specific commands, and you'll notice it do, does this with guardrail, driver, guardrail, guardrail. It has a lot of these things, and these are extra commands that, to be completely honest, I have not found to be that helpful. Most people don't know what to do with them. But if we look here at beat number two, use specific details to show George's nervousness, such as his fidgeting or sweating. Build tension by having George express his concerns about the Fairy Queen's attendance and explain why this is important. And so on. The guardrail is focus on the wedding and events leading up to the wine being served. Introduce Gloriana with specific details, such as her appearance, demeanor, and any reactions from the other characters. Etc. 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 So it's definitely working through the chapter beats that I gave it, and I've noticed it does this a little differently than when Story Engine first came out. It's now got it into much more succinct commands. You know, build tension by such and such, and I'm not saying that's wrong, but I actually have noticed that a lot of the details that I asked it to give aren't necessarily here. I mean, they're here, but there are details in my description that I would want to have in these beats that aren't necessarily here. If we look at chapter two, introduce the newlyweds, their allies, and the settings of the celebration, specify the location, time of day. So it's having a very similar opening prompt as the first chapter, which is interesting. Establish the atmosphere of the celebration through sensory details. Introduce the fairy queen's presence at the celebration. Use dialogue to explicitly state the importance of balance between justice and mercy. So, again, kind of vague, not really helpful. And if I'm being completely honest, I personally would not use the beats that Pseudorite gives you. It can maybe be an okay place to start. But, in, you know, in each case here, it gave me 400 words roughly, and you're allowed to, up to 2,000 words in your beats. And honestly, I'd say save your words and write it elsewhere, perhaps write it in ChatGPT or Claude. And tomorrow I will actually be having a video coming out about the differences between ChatGPT and Claude on generating your story beats so you can actually see them side by side and my techniques for creating those story beats. But honestly, I would not use what these have here. However, we're going to go ahead and just go with chapter one here. Honestly, I'd say these beats, even though the outline I had was much more fleshed out here, these beats, while they did stick to the order of events that I talk about in my chapter summary, much better than anything I could ask for here on the second chapter. And the beats are still pretty insufficient. And so again, I would honestly just use your own beats and use a tool like ChatGPT or Claude to expand your outline into your beats because it's going to do a lot better, in my opinion. And the good thing about that is if you have a scene structure template that you would like to use, you can use that as well. And it's important, I think, to be building these templates as you go because not only does it provide structure to your scene, but it also makes it much easier for, for the AI to, yeah. to work with that. So anyway, let's go ahead and just use these beats that we have. So 
It says, begin by describing the setting of the wedding, including the location, time of day, any noticeable features. The guardrail is focused on the wedding and events leading up to the wine being served. And again, guardrail is basically just a command to try and keep it on task. And driver, driver can be useful in certain instances when you have like an underlying motive of the person and you want to really establish that. What's the emotion of the scene and that kind of thing? What's driving the action? That's basically what we're using here. Interestingly here for the second beat, we have the driver being the urgency and stress of the situation as everyone is worried they are about to lose the battle for Earth. This is something I put in my tone way back when, and I should probably take it out because it's going to be coloring the entire thing in this way if I leave it. So I'm actually going to take this out a little bit here. I'm also going to take out the guardrail because I really feel like these things overcomplicate it and you don't need it. All you need is a very detailed description of what needs to happen in this particular scene. Now for beat number one, I think this is okay actually because I've given it the chapter outline with all of these details about the wedding, the location, the time of day, any noticeable features, and I think I can start with that. I would say start with a line of dialogue because I I feel like every book needs to start with action of some kind and uh, dialogue is a good way to do that usually and I could add a whole lot more to this and I would if I were doing this for real uh, for instance here use specific details to show George's nervousness such as his fidgeting or sweating show that Una is calm by contrast she takes a moment to look at out over the rest of the crowd and we get a description of each one they are all here every ally they've gained so far other than prince arthur and una doesn't know where he is and let's add a little bit about she has a brief worry that maybe it's not a good idea to have everyone in one place at one time all right so we now have these two beats this is probably good to go on for now we could continue doing this for all four beats or all 12 beats excuse me and you can add your own beats it doesn't have to be more than or it can be more than 12. Another thing that a lot of people don't know is that you can add extra details to the beginning of your beats, above the beats. This scene, and I like to put the setting information here, takes place, and I wrote this earlier. This scene takes place in an open courtyard in the once abandoned Castle Silene, which they are starting to rebuild. It is close to dusk and it is a beautiful early spring day or i should say evening so that establishes the setting i could even signpost this a little bit with say say setting and then another thing i like to do at this point is just repeat some of the style bits that i feel are most important Uh, things like avoid mushy dialogue and descriptions key uh, use real realistic dialogue and etc etc you could add more to that use mixed cadence and there we go now we have those that setting and additional style information here this is also a good place so let's go to the actual style here and i've got everything listed under third person limited point of view. If I wanted to, I could say third person limited point of view from Una's perspective here, but not the entire book isn't going to be from Una's perspective. Just this first chapter is. And so instead of saying from Una's perspective, I will put just third limit, third person limited point of view here. And then for each chapter, if we go back here, I can add information about her, point of view here. This scene takes place in third person limited point of view from Una's 
perspective. And now we should have, I think, everything we need to at least start trying to generate these beats. And so let's go ahead and do that. We can come down here and this is where the pros is fully fleshed out and we have three options the first is most accurate we have best pros and fastest now i don't know this for sure but i am like 99 percent confident that most accurate is using gpt4 best pros is using claude and fastest is using gpt 3.5 best pros you might think like, why is, why wouldn't you use best pros? Because obviously you want a good realistic pros here. And the reason is it can get off track very fast, but it does produce really good pros, which is a shame. I tend to default to most accurate most of the time because with the right style prompts, you can still get pretty good pros out of it, but it really takes some experimenting and some tweaking to get it exactly what you, you want. But if you pick most accurate, it will stick to your beats much, much better. The thing about best pros, if you're using, this is essentially Claude underneath it, it will write these two first two beats because it processes these things two at a time. And it'll go a little off the rails for these two beats. Then it'll start writing the next two beats, but it will continue from where it went off rather than start with these two beats. And so it will it's already off a little bit and then from there it'll get off even more and you know it's just like you're turning by a couple of degrees and then a couple more degrees and so by the end by the time it gets to beat 12 here the beats that it's giving you or the pros it's giving you have almost nothing to do with the actual information here which is a shame because it's it's really good and hopefully it's something that they're able to improve and we can always keep testing it and seeing if it gets any better. But most accurate doesn't do that as much. What When you're using the most accurate one, what I've found to be the case is it'll stray a little bit at the end. And often you have to delete a chunk from each set of two be beats. But it'll come right back on for the next set of two beats for like three and four and then stray a little bit at the end, then come right back for five and six and so on. And so you do kind of have to, at the end of each set of two beats, when you're looking through the pros, you do often have to chop off a chunk at the end for each one, but string it all together and get rid of those little chunks and it tends to do really well. So let's go ahead and experiment and try what and see what most accurate gives us. And what you can do You'll notice as you get through the beats, you can ask it to pause and it will just finish up the beats it's working on and then it'll stop. One of the tips I've heard from people that I, that tends to work is that you can get it to do these beats here and then you can fix them up how you like them and then ask, only then do you ask it to continue with the next set of beats. And then when you do that, it understands what's going on a little bit better because you've fixed it up how you like it. And then it continues off from then. So if you're worried about it getting off the rails, that's one way to do it. It just requires you to start and stop and start and stop all the time. But this might be a good strategy for using the better, pro the best pros option. So. Let's look at this. Everything is set, my love, Una whispered to George as they stood beneath the ancient oak tree at the center of Castle Silene's courtyard. Uh, so it did do what I instructed it to, which is to start with the line of dialogue. Although it's, uh, again, it's kind of one of those cheesy lines of dialogue, but okay. George nodded, though his face was tense, beads of sweat forming on his brow. So it is following the beats here fairly well. Let's go ahead and do best prose and restart and see what it gives us now. And like I said, I'm going to pause it immediately so it only finishes these first two beats. All right, so now we have these first two beats. It's nearly time, Una said, her voice steady despite the butterflies in her stomach. The courtyard of Castle Saline was awash in the golden light of dusk. Lanterns hung from makeshift wooden arches, not yet rebuilt to their former glory, but still lending an air of celebration. Already I can tell you the prose is so much better here. For sure. Una clasped George's hands in her own, giving them a small squeeze. Her palms were clammy, and she could feel the slight tremble in his fingertips. Right. Time, George said gruffly. He ran a hand over his hair and straightened his tunic, eyes darting over the assembled crowd. 
Una followed his gaze, taking in the faces of their allies, friends, and those who had pledged fealty to their cause. It's, so it's done a really good job at sticking to my prompt. But as we get to the end here, Georgia, Schul- she says, it'll be fine. She said, gently, we've prepared for this. This, everything from here on was not in my prompt. And George's shoulders relaxed slightly at her words. You're right. I just, his eyes widened at the fir- first strains of the music filled the air. It's time. He offered Una his arm. She took it, savoring the solid warmth of him by her side. Yada, yada, yada. This moment was theirs. So if I were to continue generating the beats and go into beat three and four, this right here is where it would start, even though this was not really part of my prompt. So what I want to do is actually just delete this and I could add more to the end of this. I could fix this up how I like it. This is honestly, I've seen many more words generated from two beats here. This is a pretty short result here, but granted there wasn't much to go on. And so we could at this point just go ahead and say continue and it's gone ahead and continued with beat number three and beat number four it's numbering them weirdly but sometimes the ai does unexpected things like that and it's gone ahead and started exactly from where i was it didn't start from where it could have been where so all of that stuff that i deleted it's forgotten about that basically oh and i need to pause it again But that's the idea behind this. So if you really want the best results, I would say go with best pros. But if you if you do best pros, you need to be editing it as you go and understand that because it's using Claude, Claude has a tendency to shorten things. And so you might find yourself having to add a lot more. I found that most accurate tends to give you more detail, more of what you want. And so that's something to consider as well. You really do need to try both ways. I have found that most accurate can work really well, but you have to prompt it very well as well. And so the your beats have to be on point. They have to give you all the detail, everything you want to hear in that particular scene. Your style has to be really, really good. And then the most accurate should work for you. So that is a little bit of a tutorial on how to use the beats and how do you uh, manage the pros that is coming out of Sudorite. And I'll see you in the next video.